we're in. So let's put that on one side and talk about the ports and maritime sector. This is the 40-page report that was launched last Friday by the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. It was put together in partnership with Financial Derivatives Company and Center for International Private Enterprise called CIPE. Well, let's just give you a quick summary. And Vincent Tumwani, Dr. Vincent, is here in the studio to talk to that. Uh, part of the summary, the stakeholder survey, this is what he says, 100% of the respondents agree that all the port stakeholders need reform. So everybody agrees. But 91% says corruption is a big issue. 100% of the respondents says man-made delays, that is artificial delays at the port, is a problem. 85% says all the previous reforms in Nigeria's ports and maritime had not worked. 80% said foreign exchange crisis is their main challenge. 100% ports, transport, and ICT infrastructure, they said, that is the problem. That's a bit of a summary. 40 page, you need to go online and get this yourself. Uh, are the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry website. Vincent Tumwani, thanks for coming through. Thank In you charge very of research much for and uh, uh, advocacy at the LCCI. This is your report Nigeria reforming the maritime. Ports. Okay, so now let us start from this report that was unveiled last week and you spoke about it with a lot of industry stakeholders. Uh, but let's talk to the summary of this report. Well, the, one of them is that the, there is consensus there is, that, that we have problems at the port. And if we're going to take the diversification drive of the current administration forward, we need to fix our port. The ease of doing business in Nigeria is agreed to be very poor. World Bank is of doing business report 2016. Uh, we, are, we rank one, 169 out of 185 country. But the worst is ease of doing business in the port, which is 182 out of one, 185 countries. We're doing so badly in terms of maritime, uh, maritime and other ports. And all the stakeholders, like you said in the summary, agree that we need to do something and very quickly to begin to unlock our non-oil sector. It's very and that, that disheartening and very disappointing. 85% of this survey that you carried out with uh, our, our financial derivative says previous port reforms did not work. Unfortunately, and that, the last post before we had, we had was between 2007 and 2010 under the last administration. Yes, you know all of the mandates and objective and aspiration of that of that uh, reform never came true. We want to see that Nigerian port become the hub in West Africa, make it uh, faster, make it make, make it a little bit cheaper. See. Uh, but it takes it is even more e easy or easier to import than to export for you to import for you to for you to import you need to um have something to do with about 18 agencies and you need 23 signatures you're talking about regulatory I'm overlap you, yeah. and deficiency so we have so yeah. many agencies operating in the port the last rep uh, reform said only six Today we have 14 agencies operating in the port, and if you unbundle these 14 agencies, it may arrive, it, you may arrive at a number close to 28. These are challenges, you know. But I think the major focus now is to see what are the quick wins, the low-hanging fruits, such that if we impl implement them in the month, 18 months' time, we begin to see results and changes. The, 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 uh, the uh, representative of the Office of the Vice President was at the event on Friday, and this report will go to the Office of the Vice President, mm -hmm. looking at the national economy, looking at the ease of doing business, the reform being put together, including the Minister of Trade, Industry, and, 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 and Investment, uh, Dr. Enelama. Do you think uh, re, uh, trying to squeeze in the agencies kind of remove the overlap? The deficiencies, the multiplicity, the duplicity of what goes on in the port is one way to start the reform. Oh, well, another round of reforms. That's correct. Of course, it, if this uh, report, the key recommendations are taken up from the highest level, and that is the coordinating ministry as far as the economy is concerned, that is the office of the vice president, we think we will be able to get better traction. You know, but a, a ministry such as Transportation Ministry that control NEMASA, Nigerian Port Authority, and other big agencies also need to take this seriously. And we, we're happy that the minister was represented by the DG of NEMASA, you know, and um, uh, the Nigerian uh, Shippers Council at the highest level was there to also, uh, also give us uh, some comfort that they're going to do something and very quickly for that matter. And one of the ways to start is to begin to eliminate the duplicity, you know, and we think that introducing um, technology, the customs single window 
it's a way to go. Today we have the single window, but it's not working because it's just a custom, a custom initiative and a custom project. We want it to be all stakeholders' projects. You know, both the, uh, uh, the terminal operators, the freight forwarders, the shipping companies, the government regulators, and even importers and, and exporters believe that if we introduce technology, not just in the way we clear our goods, to remove a documentation and human interface where you have to drop and bribe, you need to we, we move forward. And even trucking system, the advanced, the advanced cargo system, a good uh, uh, investment in, in, in truck parks, these are, these are things that even private sector can invest in. I'm going to interject in here. You go to the ports and it's like something else, like a beehive. Hmm. Should everybody be present at the ports? And the key question is, do I need to go to the ports to clear this laptop, for example, do we need to be there? Do we need to have all the agencies there? Does everybody have to go there? All the importers, the freight forwarders, clearing agents, whatever you call them, the quarter, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> because that report says the man-made problem is 100%. Exactly. The, 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 you don't need that. And you see some other agencies like the Standard Organization of Nigeria, the NAVDAG, the Quarantine, Port Health Authority, and the LEA, the police... Uh, 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 DSS uh, uh, and all of these agencies on the same issue. You know, it's hanging creating, around, hanging around. Of the course, course, you don't need to see all of it. So that's why we're talking about technology. That anywhere you are, you'll be able to know how much you're going to pay. National valuation database, such that custom giving you what to pay as your import duty. You know, it's not. It's no longer as a spirit-led computation. You know, you know, it is easy for you to see the shippers, uh, the shipping companies, the importer, the freight forwarders. Everybody is on the same page at the same time, and we need to invest in technology and make it work. The complaint portal, uh, being currently being run by the Nigerian Shippers Council, also need to be boosted and ensure that it is accessible to everybody 24 hours. See, now we are running our our port as part time. Everywhere in the world, port is run 24 hours on Salad Day, on Christmas Day. It is not the same in Nigeria. You see a situation where the port. Authority, the, the port workers resume around 9, by 12, they're on 2 hours break, 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock, they're, they're closing. But you pay them already for Saturday, for Sunday, for weekends and public holidays. We need port that can work 24 hours, powered by, by, powered by technology. The security in the, in the port needs to be uh, interconnected. You know, we need to have strong surveillance system, even through the channel. One quick one, one quick one. It was identified at the conference, uh, at this unveiling on Friday, that undervaluation, that is deliberate undervaluation, deliberate fraudulent filing of reports by importers That's and correct. exporters is a key problem in our maritime sector. Of Do course. you talk about that here? Of course, yeah. One of the, uh, the, one of the outcomes of the report, of course, and you, you were there, uh, we find out that the sharp practices of importers and port, uh, what is it called, port users is also a, a challenge. And that is one of the incentives for regulators to begin to sit down and see what everything, full, see, physical, exa physical, full examination. physical and full examination of, con con so there is trust deficit and trust issue, ethical issues. And when we ask the uh, MDAs, what are the things we expect from private sector? They say we need to do our business in an ethical manner. And the report was very clear that the willingness and the, sub the willingness to give tips and bribes to officers is even stronger than the willingness for from, these officers from, from to collect. importers and other port users, uh, uh, whether they are freight forwarders, who would like to give tips or bribes to clear their goals. And make it do faster, you know, pass through the wrong like way, you know. Mm. So, but if you introduce technology, everywhere in the world, everybody wants to give bribes. But if you make bribes, given to be impossible by introducing technology that remove all the human interface and bring everybody on the same page at every time make sure that you work 24 hours make sure that as your goods are coming advanced clearing uh, clearing system such as uh, the, the, the ship is still on the, in the high sea everybody knows what is inside everybody is already you clear before the, the ship ar arrives and that makes our port works efficiently you see the terminals are, are, are decongested you know and they allow for smooth flow of time, you know, over the last six months, we've seen terminal operators increase um, increase their uh, terminal charges by about 100 percent. Foreign exchange, forereign exchange low issue, volume, drop in uh, drop in the volume because they they have to balance up with the economic of scale. 80 percent of the goods that land in our port, uh, neighbor neighbor's port, uh, Benin, 
have the, the destination, the final destination is Nigeria. So we are losing money, we are losing trade. And what we're saying, as far as this report is concerned, is that government should begin to marry this issue of revenue generation and trade facilitation objective. And it's, it's important to look at trade facilitation more. The more you facilitate trade in the port, the more you create job in the town. If we reform our ports and make do with the uh, eight major recommendations, which we call the low-hanging fruits uh, embedded in this report, we think, and the, the projection is that over the next 18 months, we're going to block about one, b one trillion naira loss under inefficiencies inherent in the port system today, create 10,000 more jobs in the port, and about 800 jobs in the, in the industrial sector. That is with it. And if you do that, you know the implication on, on employment number, it will, it will go up. You know the implication on tax system it to go up. You know, so it's a win-win situation for both the private sector and the public sector. Uh, you think this report is getting to the right authorities? Of course, of course. All, all of the agencies were there on Friday. They, they, they spoke not just getting to them, but that uh, stakeholder, uh, that stakeholder belief and agreement that we are going to do something about that. They have it in soft copy and hard copy. And this morning, by the time we, uh, uh, my colleagues in the office are already sending it, both in hard copy and soft copy, to some that were not in the in the in the in that meeting. And after that, we're also having uh, meetings, you know, private meeting, one-on-one -on -one meeting with key agencies to track how they are implementing this report over the next six months. Looks like a lot of job there for you. Thank you very much, Dr. Thank Vincent you for Tawani, having me. Thank uh, you. Who is the uh, head of director of research and advocacy at the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. We hope to look more of this. You guys always uh, turn out reports another time. Oh, in case I forgot, this is Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.